When it comes to making money on DoorDash, it's all great, but there are some things that are good to know, and these things will actually cause you to make more money if you utilize them. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you five things that will help you make more money on DoorDash because you'll be either more efficient or you just straight up make more money. And these things are applicable if you're new to the delivery industry in general, or if you're coming from another app like Uber Eats or Postmates or Grubhub, these things are exclusive to the DoorDash experience in the sense of if you know them, you can make more money on this platform. So let's get into the video. Sup everyone, this is Logic with the Rideshare Guy. In this video, I'll be sharing with you five things that can improve your bottom line when it comes to DoorDash. These five things I'm gonna share with you are exclusive to the DoorDash experience. So they either affect how much time you spend on your delivery or they affect the amount of money you can make while on a delivery. In this industry, time is money, so if you get more done in less time, by default, you'll make more money because you can get more deliveries within an hour. So, let's start it off with tip number one. Number one is to take advantage of the long ping time that DoorDash gives you. So, with DoorDash, you actually get 30 to 60 seconds to decide if you're actually going to take an order. So, a ping will pop up, you know, actually if you want to accept or decline. It's between 30 to 60 seconds, where on other apps, it's usually under 30 seconds occasionally you will get a ping where it's like 15 seconds or something weird like that but that's the exception to the rule generally it's 30 to 60 seconds so what exactly do i mean by take advantage of it doordash is going to tell you how many miles the total trip is going to be it's an estimate so maybe more or less but it's going to let you know the total amount of miles as well as how much you're going to make on the delivery with the tip included so with that information you can efficiently decide okay is this worth my time or not? I mean, me personally, I have a few things I take into consideration before I accept the delivery. I always wanna be making at least a dollar per mile. So for example, let's say an order is paying $6 and it's going eight miles. And by eight miles, that's including going to the restaurant, then from the restaurant going to the customer. Total amount is eight miles. Am I gonna take it? No, because it's not meeting my dollar per mile threshold. But let's say that same order is paying $14. I'm more likely to take it because I'm making more than a dollar per mile. My second threshold is, well, I mean, where's the restaurant? It's gonna tell you what the restaurant is. And I'm gonna look at if the restaurant is notorious for having a long wait time. If they are, I'm gonna take that in consideration because if you're waiting for 20 minutes, that's the only order you'll probably get in that hour. So if you're making enough money in that hour, then it's worth it. But if you're not, then I would go ahead and pass. You see, I just gave a little small analysis on is it worth it or not? That's what I mean by take advantage of that 30 to 60 seconds when it comes to the ping time. A lot of new drivers who just accept it or decline it solely based on price when if you look at it, it might not be the best thing to take at that time. Number two is actually call ahead of time and place the order. So before we go further into that, let's back up and cover the type of orders you'll get on DoorDash. There's three types of orders you'll get. The first type is you just go and pick the food up. It's already prepaid and all you do is literally walk in, show them the name and number, then you just pick the food up. That's the first type. The second type is you go in, the order is already placed by DoorDash, but you actually gotta pay for it using their um, red card. So that's the second type of order. But the third type is the order has not been placed, so you have to go place the order, pay for it, pick it up, and then complete the order. Well, if you're getting the third type of order, you can actually call the restaurant ahead of time and place the order over the phone. That way, when you get there, there's a good chance that it'll probably be ready. A lot of new drivers don't actually think about this strategy because if you actually got to go there, place the order, then pay for it, well, while you're waiting there, you could be there for like 10 minutes and then you're just wasting time and time is money. So for instance, if I'm taking a Wendy's order, I know I got to pay using the red card and I'm at the order when I get there, the moment I accept the order, I'm going to call the restaurant, tell them the order, and I'll place the order over the phone. And when I get there, all I got to do is actually just pay for it and pick it up. It's effectively, just eliminating a lot of time, which allows you to finish sooner. And remember, time is money. So you want to make sure you do that if you're going to be taking orders of the third type. Number three, always over schedule your dash. So DoorDash is different from the other platforms in the sense of you got to schedule when you actually want to go online and work. So let's say you want to hit the dinner rush. So you want to get between 5 p.m. 
and 10 p.m. Look on the schedule and it's, you know, it's available. You go ahead and schedule that and 10 p.m. comes, you log off, but it's actually pretty busy. You wouldn't mind it keep, you wouldn't mind keep going, but it's not an option because you didn't over schedule. So I have a habit of scheduling at least two hours over whatever I want. So in that instance, I would schedule between 5 p.m. and midnight if it's available. And let's say it's just busy. People are ordering, they got the night munchies, whatever it is. Well, I can just keep going. I'll just keep going, stacking up the money. Simple as that. On the same note, let's say 945 rolls and I'm tired, it's busy, but I don't care. I just want to go home. You can always just end your dash early. And just so you're, if you're wondering, there's no negative repercussions of doing this. So you can end the dash early or you can keep going. But that option is only on the table if you over schedule. So get in the habit of over scheduling your dash and always just cut back early if you don't want to take advantage of additional time that's available. No harm, no foul. Number four is actually kind of an extension of number three, but always be looking to extend your dash if you don't get what you originally wanted. So going with our example, let's say I wanted that five to 10 o'clock shift. It's not available. Only thing that's available is between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. A lot of new dashes will say, oh, oh, well, well, I'll do the 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. and just get the money then go home. Or some people will say, oh, well, what I want isn't available, so just screw it for that day. No, don't do that. Just go ahead and hop on to 5 to 7 p.m. and always be looking to extend your dash because you got to remember people are rescheduling their dashes. They're ending their dashes early. All kinds of stuff are always going on. So often the time, the option to extend your dash may pop up later when you're in the middle of your dash. So I have the habit of doing these things if I don't get the original schedule that I want. I always look to extend my dash once I get to a restaurant, once I get back in the car, once I drop the food off, and if I'm waiting just in the parking lot for another delivery, I'll check every five minutes. Some of y'all may be thinking that's a little much, but if you're checking that often, when someone decides to reschedule their dash or whatever, it's going to be sent back out to the masses of people that can get another, you know, they can fill in that spot. And you want to be the first to claim that spot, so you got to be checking regularly. Now, if you want to know exactly how to extend your dash, you can check out our uh, DoorDash tutorial where we show visuals on the screen to show you how to extend your dash. But always be looking to extend it if you don't get originally what you're looking for. Or let's say you decide you want to go ahead and go on a little longer but your dash is about to end in like an hour. Maybe you can extend your dash. Never hurts to check. And number five is to use DoorDash support. Now, uh, on a lot of these delivery apps, you can kind of slide by without using their support in a lot of instances. You can to some degree here, but you really don't want to because you could be leaving money on the table. So I'll give you a perfect example. Let's say you get to a restaurant and Restaurant tells you that the customer canceled the order, and this is based on a true story. This happened to me. So you go back to your car and you contact support. Support, you know, talks to you, and once they verify that the order was canceled by the customer, they say, hey, you drove to the restaurant, so we're going to compensate you by giving half the amount for the actual delivery, which in my case, the original delivery was about like, it's for like $23 or something. So I got compensated around $11.50 just for. I drove literally a mile to get to the restaurant and I was on the uh, chat support for like 10 minutes. So for, <laughs> I'll say maybe 20 minutes of time and one mile of driving, I got $11.50. And I think if I remember right, I got another $10 order within that hour. So, I mean, do the math, that adds up. A lot of newer drivers in that instance would have been, oh, it's canceled. So they would just go back to their car, cancel the order themselves. And guess what? They don't get anything because... They just weren't aware of this. So it does come with a balance because there are instances where you don't want to use support. So let's say you get to a, uh, the drop off location for a customer and you can't get in contact with them and you, you don't know where to leave it. If you contact support, then they're going to tell you to initiate the timer, which is about between five and eight minutes. Then they'll tell you to leave the food and take a picture of it. Well, you might waste 10 minutes just for support to tell you that. So. You want to evaluate if you can, if you want to contact support. I, I use this criteria. If I contact support, are they going to do something that I can't do? And will I get paid for it? If the answer is yes, I contact them. If the answer is no, 
I'm going to look for a solution myself unless I don't have one, then I'll contact them. But just be aware that these scenarios exist because oftentimes if it's something you can't handle, you contact support instead of just canceling the order and just losing time and money. If you contact support, you may get half the delivery or maybe even the full amount based on what's going on. And with that being said, we have five things that new DoorDashers can add to their inventory to make more money. And usually these are things that they end up skipping out on just because they don't know about. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. We publish new videos every single week, so be sure to subscribe if you're new. And also give the video a like, like hit that thumbs up button until it turns blue. It's uh, greatly appreciated. And if you haven't signed up for DoorDash yet, you can do so by using our link in the description below. And if you haven't checked out our DoorDash tutorial to give us more visuals of the actual app, then feel free to check that out. It's in the card in the top right or left hand card right now. I'll catch y'all in the next video. As I like to say, be safe and profitable out there.